I couldn't save Lily from the fire. I failed everyone. One of the powerful aspects of horror games is that their true meaning can sometimes be hidden inside the realm of their storyline and narrative, instead of through direct scares. But those true meanings are not always meant to scare you or cause you fear. In some cases, they are actually meant to touch your heart and evoke emotions in your mind that are heavily shrouded in tragedy and sorrow. Sometimes, they want you to feel the pain the protagonist is going through and how their nightmare can be something you can relate to and understand. And in other plots, they want you to learn a deep lesson at the end of the eerie journey. But the common theme is that their ultimate goal is to make you realize that relief and salvation are not always what's waiting for you at the end of the tunnel, even when there's a glimpse of light. The psychological impact of this type of horror is actually much more effective in making us uncomfortable than confounding entities like ghosts or monsters. Because it basically sheds light on the scariest thing we can ever deal with, which is our inner demons and dark thoughts. That's why in today's video, I'm going to talk about 10 specific moments in horror games that truly triggered our emotions and forced us to stop a little bit to comprehend why this moment feels real and not something fictional. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Devotion is not a horror game that contains a sad moment or chapter. It's actually a game with a sad story that's designed more to make you emotionally tormented while witnessing the events than scared or terrified. Devotion is set in Taiwan during the 1980s and follows the story of a family haunted by their past and a series of unsettling events that unfold within their apartment. It primarily revolves around the lives of the protagonist, Du Feng Yu, who is a screenwriter, along with his wife, Li Fang, who is a retired singer, and their ill daughter, Mai Xin, who dreams of following in her mother's footsteps. The events are presented from the perspective of the father, Du Feng Yu, who has seen better days in his career and is facing the challenges of family life. As you explore the eerie house, you uncover the family's history and the emotional struggles they faced, including guilt, regret, and the weight of parental responsibility. However, the most painful aspect of the narrative is the health issues of the daughter, Mai Shin, and her relationship with her father. Throughout the game, you encounter clues and fragments of memories that shed light on Mai Shin's personality, interests, and interactions with her father. Her life touches upon themes such as family bonds, the complexities of parent-child relationships, and the vulnerabilities of childhood. She had a lot of goals to achieve, but sadly, her illness prevented her from pursuing her dreams, which led to her father's drowning in anguish and pain while seeing his daughter suffer without him being able to do anything to help her. Even the TV show that might look joyful and cheerful at first sight is basically another reminder of pain for the father because it's actually a singing contest in which his little girl loses. Despite the fact that every second of the playthrough is a test for your emotions and ability to endure depressing events, I believe most of us can agree that what happens at the end is the straw that breaks the camel's back. Towards the end of the game, we find out that Feng Yu is involved in a cult, and as he becomes more and more devoted to it, he agrees to follow a ritual that the cult says will cure his daughter. So he decided to put Mai Shin in a bath full of alcohol for a full week and lock her in because the cult says that it will clean and cure her. 
However, the poor little girl tragically dies, presumably from alcohol and starvation, or even dehydration. Feng Yu then becomes riddled with guilt and reaches an unbearable level of regret that's close to insanity, and it's a little unclear what he does afterwards. The game leaves a space for speculation about what happened to him, which makes his mysterious fate as agonizing as his daughter's. 最后开始不能呼吸了我不是真的打算把《Resident Evil 7》列入这个名单，因为我根本没有记得一个时刻能够让它成为合格来讨论的。但是，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我想起来了，我
and embrace insanity was one of the most disturbing and distressing moments we dealt with in the realm of horror gaming, especially when you know that it's irreversible and saving them is not an option. Zoe! <laughs> Zoe! There you are. Jack! Get your hands here, Jack! Get over here, Jack! Dave, stop! Why are you doing this? Now what's the matter, honey? Don't you want to play with your new sister? She is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lucas, you just hush. You've long outgrown that room. Always want to run a bed and breakfast. <laughs> Got your big break, didn't you? <laughs> Get her to bed. I'll put some soup on. Oh, good enough for soup, don't you think? Excuse me, but Lucas. Even though Limbo might look like a casual game at first sight, it's actually one of the deepest and darkest horror experiences you can delve into. And that's mostly because of its enigmatic plot and ambiguous story, especially since the game does not have any dialogue or narration, or even text to explain what is happening. The player controls an unnamed boy who wakes up in a dark forest and tries to find his missing sister, but along the way, he encounters various dangers and puzzles such as a giant spider, hostile children, mind-controlling worms, gravity-defying machines, and even deadly traps. The true meaning and interpretation of the Limbo story are left up to player speculation. Some theories suggest that the game represents a purgatorial state between life and death, where the boy is trapped and must confront his past wrong decisions or mistakes. Others view it as an exploration of the trials and tribulations of growing up and overcoming fear and adversity. However, the ending of the story will leave you with even more questions than answers, and I'm pretty sure none of them will include any happy thoughts at all. The game ends with the boy breaking through a glass wall and landing near his sister, who is sitting next to a grave, and this basically leaves players with two different theories that can explain what happened. The first theory is that the boy and his sister are actually dead and trapped within the realm of Limbo, existing in a space that lies between heaven and hell. Consequently, they are forever barred from breaking free or reuniting, and the game becomes an unending cycle of their torment and anguish. The second theory suggests that the boy's journey leads him to the discovery that he has passed away while his sister is still alive. Desperate to reach her, he traverses the haunting realm, only to find that they are separated by an impassable barrier and despite his efforts to break through, he arrives too late to make contact. Whether unnoticed or misunderstood, the sister remains unaware of his presence or perhaps perceives him as an ethereal apparition. Both theories are honestly terrifying and shrouded in mystery and sadness, but the power of the game is that we can't know for sure what's actually true, which really makes things even more dismal. Push no, through. no, no, that's crazy. 
I saved you. We're safe here. I locked us in. Get that door open. I can't. Do it! The Walking Dead Season 1 is a game that I personally believe surpassed all expectations when it comes to how deeply amazing it was and how even it can be considered better than its source of inspiration, which is the TV show. The game's strongest aspect can be easily felt through its meaningful and powerful story, which focuses heavily on your decisions and choices to reach the most satisfying outcome possible. But just like choices in real life can sometimes be very hard, choices in the game can also be depressing and lead to an outcome that cannot be a happy ending at all. And it's mainly because the options you have are basically designed to break your heart one way or another. Even though the whole story is full of emotionally charged moments, I don't think any moment comes close to the heartbreaking ending that revolves around the fate of Lee Everett and Clementine, which are the main characters of the game. The most depressing side is that the game technically has two possible endings, but both of them are sad and equally disturbing. In the first ending, Lee is bitten by a zombie and slowly succumbs to the infection, which already feels dire enough. However, the consequences become even more heartbreaking as you are faced with a difficult decision. As Lee's condition worsens, he realizes he is running out of time before he turns into the walking dead himself. Knowing he is doomed, Lee makes the heartbreaking choice to ask Clementine to leave him behind for her safety. After all the time Lee spent protecting the young girl Clementine during the whole playthrough, you, as a player, must choose between having her shoot him to prevent his transformation into a walker, or simply leaving him to meet his fate. This conclusion leaves players emotionally impacted by the bond between Lee and Clementine, and the harsh realities of humanity and survival that always require sacrifice. There are a lot of stories people tell about the Finch family. Most of them end strangely. Some of them don't even seem possible. And they can't all be true, obviously. But the Finch family stories I believe, the ones that seem real to me, those are always the ones where somebody dies at the end. I'm not sure if the story I'm about to tell you is true or not, but I know it's something nobody's heard before. Just like Devotion, What Remains of Edith Finch is also a game that relies on emotional storytelling and sequences of dire events that happened in the past, which means that its main goal is to touch your psychology from the gate of sadness instead of direct horror. The game follows the story of the Finch family, and you're playing from the perspective of a girl named Edith Finch, the last surviving member of the family, which is afflicted by a perceived curse that causes all but one member of each generation to die in unusual ways. As Edith, you return to her family's home, which is located on a remote island in Washington State, to uncover the truth about her family's curse. But in the process, you discover that the Finch family has a long and tragic history, and that each generation is doomed to suffer strange and untimely deaths, to the extent that the misfortunes have led to them sealing off rooms and passages in the house to avoid the tragedies that befall them. As you explore the house, you discover the story of each family member through a series of interactive scenes that often involve fantastical and surreal elements. The stories range from the past to the present, reflecting the unique personalities and circumstances of each Finch family member and how they sadly lost their lives. Every sequence will cause you to feel sad for each person because each one of them had their own dreams and ambitions that they could never achieve. 
The fact that you're discovering the lives of people who died a long time ago causes you a weird feeling of anguish because you can't do anything to help or try to comfort them. But if you manage to keep your emotions solid through all of that, I can assure you that the ending will touch your mind and heart, no matter how you mentally prepare yourself for it. In the final scenes of the game, you'll realize that Edith actually died while she was giving birth to her baby. And you'll discover that the main character is her son Christopher. It is revealed that Edith passed away while giving birth to Christopher in 2017, and at some unspecified point in the future, Christopher is seen tenderly laying flowers on his mother's grave as a poignant tribute to her memory. It becomes evident that Edith died at the age of 18 years old, making her another member of the Finch family who met a tragic end, but she left a journal for her son, wishing him a happy life and explaining to him the tragedy of what happened to his relatives. Edith, what are you doing in here? It's mine. Edith! Mom, you're gonna rip it, let go! I kicked and screamed, but Mom dragged me to the car. My mom didn't like to talk about it. But she started getting sick a lot. <coughs> the rest happened pretty quickly. She got better for a while. And then she didn't. And then I was alone. The last finch left alive. Until I found out about you. The dead walking around in your head isn't even a ghost. He never existed. A Frankenstein's monster, a child's fantasy. But you're alive. Your mother is alive. She's not the monster you make her out to be. You need to live your life. Cheryl. Dad. If we're being completely honest, the Silent Hill franchise can pretty much be included in the whole list due to the fact that the series itself is pretty much centered around agony and despair, and the nightmarish worlds that people can have in their minds, as a result of painful memories and history. Among the multitude of installments that confirm this idea, Silent Hill Shattered Memories stands out as one of the most memorable stories because it contains eerie and uncomfortable moments that affected our emotions. The game is a reimagining of the first installment of the series and retains the premise of an unstable and troubled father called Harry Mason, and his quest to find his missing daughter in the infamous American town of Silent Hill. Harry's journey is full of upsetting encounters and difficult choices that you need to make as a player in order to help him achieve his ultimate goal of uniting with his beloved daughter and ending his mental pain. But just like most of the games on this list, the ending of Harry's journey is not pleasant or pain relieving for him or even for you as someone observing the events and expecting something positive to happen. There are three possible endings you can reach, and none of them will put a smile on your face. However, two of the three endings are designed to be more gloomy and full of hopelessness. The first ending is called Broken, where Harry lowers himself to a kneeling position before his daughter Cheryl, their eyes meeting, both grappling with the difficulty of parting ways. In this moment, Cheryl emotionally tells her father that he's been by her side for such a long time, and Harry, who's trying to be strong, manages a smile and reassures her that he'll always be. Then Cheryl closes her eyes, shaking her head in a poignant farewell before the coldness begins to envelop Harry, forever preserving him in her memories. The second ending is called Bearer of Guilt, and in this one, Harry finds himself standing before his daughter Cheryl, aware that forgiveness might be beyond reach and that he has no desire for absolution either. Cheryl, burdened by guilt, musters the strength to ask her father, why did he have to die? As she suppresses her tears, insisting that it wasn't her fault and that someone must be blamed. Harry approaches Cheryl with open arms, seeking to console her, 
but she sadly resists, holding his hand away. They both feel distant and cold toward each other. And in a moment of sorrowful acceptance, Harry softly whispers, asking for Cheryl to forget him, as he withdraws from her. As he steps back, his body freezes, fixating his gaze on his daughter, until he tragically collapses to the floor and disappears forever. Dad, you are a hero. The man who died, that wasn't my father. That isn't who I remember. Those memories are all I have. You're all I have. I'm not even a ghost. I'm positive that most horror fans can agree that Little Nightmares is probably the best puzzle platform horror game ever created, and its dark tale and unique twists definitely play a big role in that. The game tells the story of Six, a nine-year-old girl who tries to escape from a place called the Maw, where children are kidnapped and eaten by grotesque creatures. The environment has a dark and disturbing atmosphere and explores themes such as hunger, fear, and corruption. You will go on an adventure with Six as she tries to survive and escape from the clutches of the mall. Along her journey, she encounters various frightful and powerful adversaries, including the janitor, the twin chefs, the lady, and the guests. As you progress through the world, you face challenging puzzles, stealth sequences, and moments of intense horror. But Six's small size and vulnerability are the most effective elements that add to the tension and fear as she navigates through the vast and eerie depths of the mall. But the weird part is that the innocence and vulnerability of this little girl are basically what make the ending deep and meaningful in a bitter and disturbing way. In the last chapter of Little Nightmares, a startling revelation unfolds as Six confronts the lady who presides over the mall and might actually be her mother. In a shocking twist, the darker side of the girl emerges as she takes the lady's life and consumes her, absorbing her powers and becoming tainted by them. With newfound abilities, she proceeds through the dining hall, consuming the souls of the guests with a chilling gaze. The conclusion of Little Nightmares is sad, because it portrays the tragic transformation of Six into a monstrous figure, marking the loss of her innocence. On top of that, she betrays the child Mono in the sequel to the game Little Nightmares 2, leaving him behind in cold blood as if he meant nothing to her. So after all she went through, the little innocent girl literally became the evil entity that she was escaping from throughout the story and lost her morals and bright side. The ending indicates that sometimes there's no escape from evil, and the scariest monster we could ever face can be hiding inside us all along. Ethan, I fought it off. It's okay. Grandpa, get away from me. Your grandmother, Gail, is protecting me from it. Ethan, I can help you. I found Vandergrift's diary. He said for the sleeper to wake up, someone has to suffer. Look! I talked about this game thoroughly in a previous video, and to avoid sounding repetitive, I'm going to remind you of what I said about it last time so you can get the full picture. The Vanishing of Ethan Carter is a horror adventure game that was released in 2014 and focuses on storytelling and exploration to reward you with a satisfying and emotional ending to your journey. The story is about Paul Prospero, a paranormal investigator who receives a letter from a young fan named Ethan Carter in 1973. 
The letter inspires him to travel to Red Creek Valley, Wisconsin, which is Ethan's hometown. When Prospero arrives, he discovers that Ethan is missing and starts experiencing eerie paranormal activity. But not only that, the small mining village also has evidence of recent violent incidents that have no clear context or explanation. From this point, you'll find yourself embarking on a complicated journey of exploration to discover what really happened. And as a player, you'll feel that you're literally curious to know the truth just as much as the protagonist Paul himself. You will start gathering clues everywhere and analyzing every sign you get your eyes on, because you're actually interested in reaching a salient conclusion to your curiosity. The investigation of Prospero eventually leads him to uncover the dark secret of the Carter family, which obviously has a long history of not getting along. It turned out that Ethan had used witchcraft to unleash a malevolent spirit known as the Sleeper, putting their lives in danger. In an attempt to appease the Sleeper, Ethan's uncle Chad and mother Missy tried to sacrifice him, but Ethan managed to escape with the help of his father Dale. This led to a series of unfortunate events where Missy killed Chad and Dale killed Missy in order to avoid becoming a vessel for the Sleeper. Then Ethan's older brother became a vessel for the Sleeper and turned on Ethan, which ultimately led to his death at the hands of his grandfather, Ed. Gail, honey, I wish there was another way. Travis. Tell me where Ethan is, now. I'm giving the sleeper what he wants, what all of us want. Look, old man, you need to go home. <gasps> I know that things sound messy, but please try to keep up with me here so you can understand what's going on. After this peculiar cycle of violence between the members of the family, Ethan and his grandfather successfully reached the location of the demonic entity residing in the old Vandergriff mansion despite losing many family members along the way. Their goal is to eliminate the entity, but things won't go as simply as they thought, because they will encounter a last surviving relative who will trap Ethan inside the entity's room, which will make him panic and set the place on fire. As the fire rages, Ethan's grandfather, who is outside, apologizes and assures him it's for the greater good of the sleeper. Both Ethan and his grandfather ultimately burn to death in a heartbreaking end to their story, but the tale is not yet finished. Once you have completed the story sequences as Prospero and explored the map, you will encounter a strange mural. This mural reveals something you would never expect. It uncovers that the events of the story, including the character of Prospero, were all invented by Ethan. Everything you've been through in the game whether it's a place, a character, or a clue, were all creations of Ethan's mind and thoughts. Nothing was real, and every event you encountered didn't actually happen at any time. It turned out that 12-year-old Ethan created an imaginary sanctuary to escape his abusive family, and that the supernatural occurrences in the town were just a product of his imagination. And the hidden room where Ethan sought refuge was located in the Vandergriff mansion where his family was taking shelter. What's wrong with your kid? Painting on walls, writing his stories. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? Ethan! For God's sake, you missed dinner! The Adventures of Paul Prospero, Supernatural Detective. Where do you get this stuff? Pop. However, the fire actually happened in real life. One evening at dinner, Ethan arrives late and is mocked by his family for his tales of a psychic detective named Paul Prospero. During the commotion, Ethan's mother, Missy, accidentally sets the place on fire with her lantern. While everyone scatters outside, Ethan runs to his secret room in the house, but unfortunately, the fire engulfs the structure and he finds himself trapped. In a moment of panic, he escapes to a world within his mind. As the smoke filled the room, the fictional character Prospero comforted Ethan, urging him to let go and move on to a new story. Meanwhile, Ethan's real family tries to put out the fire. Eventually, Ethan succumbs to the carbon monoxide and passes out, while his family desperately tries to rescue him. 
Sadly, Ethan died in that fire, with his soul gradually disappearing in the air. To be clear, his death shouldn't come as a shocking surprise to you if you paid attention throughout the game, because many hints actually seem to indicate this possibility during your search. But the surprising part is that your whole investigation in the first place didn't really happen in real life at all. And you were just playing a character that only existed in Ethan's mind. I wrote about you, but I don't know if I created you. You made me real. I can't go yet. I have to finish my story about you. I wrote stories about everyone. I know you did, but my story's done, and it's a fine story. I can... let go? You can let go. What happens then? Another story, kid. What else? Guess you won't have to. Not after this is over. Right. Have a seat. Comfortable? As good as it's gonna get. So Mutt is a game that was created by the same team that made the iconic Amnesia franchise. And it's one of those experiences that appears once in a while when it comes to powerful stories and insane plot twists that make you emotionally invested in the outcome. In the game, you assume the role of Simon Jarrett, a man who suffered a brain injury in a car accident that claimed the life of his friend and colleague Ashley Hall, who was a passenger in the vehicle he was driving. These events are set in the year 2015, and during this time, Simon agrees to participate in an experimental brain scan as part of an innovative medical procedure that was supposed to help him recover. However, when the scan is initiated, Simon suddenly finds himself transported into the future, specifically to the year 2104, in an unfamiliar and desolate underwater research facility called Pathos II. As Simon explores the dark and abandoned environment, he soon discovers that humanity is on the brink of extinction due to a comet's impact on Earth, and that the facility was once a cutting-edge research station dedicated to developing technology to help humans survive in space, but now is overrun by malfunctioning machines and twisted biomechanical creatures. Throughout the game, Simon is guided by a mysterious woman named Catherine Chun, who exists as a digital construct of a Taiwanese computer scientist in the research organization Pathos II. However, after a long journey of fighting for survival as the only human alive in the place, Simon finally discovers the sad and shocking truth about his bizarre situation. He eventually realizes that he's not the original Simon Jarrett who survived the car crash in the beginning. But instead, he's actually a digital copy of him, created during the brain scan procedure more than 80 years ago in 2015. So basically, the man who was desperate to find answers and a glimpse of hope for survival already died decades ago after a short period of the procedure in his brain. And what you were controlling the whole time was just a computer chip with replicated consciousness and memories. Despite the emotional effectiveness of that plot twist in the story, the real sad part happens at the end, when Simon and Catherine make a final attempt to save humanity by uploading digital copies of all the dead humans at the facility into something called the Ark which is a virtual reality simulation. However, Catherine, who's a copy of the original dead Catherine, knows that the attempt is unnecessary and useless, but still encourages Simon to complete the mission using the metaphor. As the Ark launches, Simon eventually realizes that their minds were not uploaded, and they remain in the pilot's seat, which makes him very devastated. Afterwards, he confronts Catherine with a bitter feeling of betrayal, but Catherine loses control, causing her digital device to overload, leaving Simon alone in the dark facility with fading power and a complete sense of hopelessness and loneliness after losing his last companion.
fucked you, Catherine. You lied. And I believed in you. I trusted you. You said we're getting on the fucking Ark. We are on the Ark, you idiot. I didn't lie. I can't be responsible for your goddamn ignorance. Ark! Catherine? Please don't leave me alone. Catherine? Catherine? I think it's safe to say that Silent Hill 2 is structured to be sad and depressing from start to finish, and it's mainly due to the mental state of its protagonist James Sunderland and his eerie history that he's trying to escape from. His story in Silent Hill 2 is a deeply tragic and emotional tale of guilt, grief, and self-punishment, and it begins with James receiving a letter from his deceased wife Mary, inviting him to meet her in their special place in the town of Silent Hill. But the problem is that Mary has been dead for three years already, succumbing to a terminal illness, which makes the letter even more disturbing. Consumed by the void left by his beloved wife's passing and overwhelmed by his grief, James embarks on a journey into the unsettling and nightmarish realm of Silent Hill, driven by a desperate quest for answers. But as the story progresses, you will discover that James actually killed Mary out of mercy to end her suffering and he basically repressed this traumatic memory and created a delusion of her waiting for him in Silent Hill, which is why he embarked on the bizarre journey to find her. Mary's gone. She's dead. She was sick? No. I killed her. Even though it's sad enough when you realize that everything you encounter in this chilling setting is a manifestation of James's suffering and pain that only exist in his mind, I personally still believe that the in-water ending of the game is the most heartbreaking and bitter moment of the whole playthrough, because it simply ends the story in the most dark and enigmatic way possible. In this ending, James finally decides to face the truth and realizes the gravity of his actions in the past that led to his devastating situation, which ultimately means that he's no longer able to escape anymore. In this section, you'll witness a distressing conversation between James and his wife Mary, but afterwards, James will come to the conclusion that he can't bear this mental torture anymore, and it's time to put an end to it once and for all. But sadly, he chose to end it in the most agonizing way possible which gives us, as players, no hope of reaching a bright light in this overwhelming story that touched our emotions from the beginning. It's also worth noting that there are other endings in the game, but unfortunately, they're not any happier in any way. No. That's not the whole truth. You also said that you didn't want to die. The truth is, Part of me hated you for taking away my life. You killed me, and you're suffering for it. It's enough, James. I know that the video might be longer than expected, but if you're familiar with my style, then you definitely realize that I love to talk deeply about each game's story to make sure that you understand the full context, especially in a topic like this one where the storyline is the core of the whole experience. If you enjoyed this list, 
make sure to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to tell me in the comments about any other moments that you think should have been featured. Until next time, stay safe and don't push yourselves too hard.